If you take fortified cereal, add water, and blend it up, you end up with this like carbohydrate goopy mess. Now if you take a rare earth metal magnet and hold it next to this mixture, you can actually see there's real iron in the cereal. Now the cereal says right on the box that there's iron in here, but it's kind of mind blowing to like actually see the metal. Also, the iron was added on purpose. When you add vitamins and minerals to cereal, it's called fortifying, and they do this to increase the nutritional value. Now, this science demonstration is actually pretty classic, showing iron and cereal, but I wanted to take it one step further. I wanted to see if we could extract enough iron from cereal, melt it down, and then shape it into a real miniature sword. So here's how we're gonna do this. We first need to find some cereal that has a lot of iron in it. So we're gonna be looking specifically for fortified cereal. And because we're conscientious of not wanting to waste food, we're gonna be looking for cereal that is on the edge of expiration. And so for this reason, we went to a discount store that sells exactly that and grabbed 20 bags of this knockoff frosted mini wheats. And they cost $2 each, which is pretty awesome. Now each serving of this specific cereal has 90% of the daily value of iron. This came out to 16.8 milligrams per serving, and there are 17 servings in each bag, so that came out to 258 milligrams per bag. So this was the cereal we went with because it had the most iron. Like these, iron. Ooh. Now we estimate that our sword should be about the size of a small nail, which is about one gram of metal. So we're gonna be aiming for extracting a thousand to 2000 milligrams, which is just about one to two grams of iron. Cereal. One gallon of wasser. Now we're gonna let that soak. Blast it into overdrive. These fit horribly. I can't wear these. Not that this is needed at all, but. I'm about to priority is safety. Seven depends on the. Very good. <laughs> You're right. Oh, we're gonna put a little bit of this in a big. Yeah, that's ironic how, how similar it is. It's like camouflage. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. See that right there on the corner? We're gonna take this magnet, the rare earth magnet. We've got three of these things. We're gonna use this one to start with. And I'm gonna put this in a bag like so. I'm going to basically go fishing in this material and those lines, that's the iron. Now you can see what's left over. That's the iron extraction. So you can see it's right there on the outside of the bag. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse this off. And we're gonna put this on the backside just to show you how much we got on our first little catch. So that's just one, one little swoop through the cereal. So I just want this to kind of dry a bit. Scoop that out of there. Oh yeah, that's a good old blob right there. So this is actually a lot of iron from one bag. Um, so we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna weigh it for its dry weight so that we can better calculate how many bags we need total in order to make the sword. 0.282 grams. Okay, so we measured out 300 milligrams from one extraction. Now, I'm a little skeptical there because there's supposed to be only 258 milligrams in the bag. That's what it says on the side. So I'm thinking that we probably have some sugars and some other carbohydrates and some other impurities in our actual extraction. So I'm gonna be conservative here and I'm gonna say that we actually got around 200 milligrams. So our extraction process is probably around 70% efficient. With that being said, that means we need five bags in order to get our one gram of iron. But also because I want to be able to have a little bit extra as wiggle room, we're gonna shoot for seven bags, put it in a large container to get out just over one gram of iron. I can smell the iron. That should be our seven right there. Not my best creation, but you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so we've let the iron dry out. I'm gonna scrape it all into one petri dish and then we're going to measure out what our total amount is that we've collected from our bags of cereal. Oh my gosh. You have to save the day. The last little bit. Okay, so we have our one gram now. So now it's time to crush that up so it's a little more fine because it's kind of chunky right now. And then we're ready to fire up the grill and get to smelting. 
Now to make this process more professional, we hit up our good friend Kevin over at Electrotech Machining, and he CNC'd us a block of high grade graphite into the shape that we wanted to melt the sword. Now this is just the sword blade. It's not exactly the handle. We're actually gonna make the handle out of wood. And we did that so that we could kind of replicate the process of making a sword, like how you normally do it. Sort of. <laughs> he nailed yes! it! Wow! Oh my gosh. Also on the back side here, you can see that we have this kind of just like regular shape, but it's a little bit deeper. And that's because if like the front side just didn't work out for whatever reason, we could at least get the iron down in here and cold shop the blade to our liking. Also, this project was in part inspired by Bobby Duke Arts. I met Bobby at a convention like five years ago. Super rad dude. He's like a true artist, just really rad. I'm putting Bobby's YouTube channel in the link below. This needs to be ground up before we put this into graphite cast. Da, da, da. Oh, it's like soaking up the water. That's that's not good. <laughs> oh, oh no. no! Okay, so here's what happened. We bought a furnace in order to melt iron. I don't think that furnace packaging was quite accurate um, because it did not get up to temperature to actually melt anything. The iron that we pulled out of the cereal should be very pure. So we decided to do a comparison test with some iron filings that we bought online and we got very similar results. It was kind of like this like gravelly sort of log that just didn't really stick together. It just like wasn't a metallic, it's a blade, it melted type thing that we were going for. So we're gonna explore some other options until we get the frosted mini shank. Okay, so we could not get up the temperature with our propane furnace at all whatsoever. So I started talking to Kevin, who's the guy who essentially machined us the piece of graphite. And he knew other people that have a plasma furnace that can get well beyond the temperature that we needed to melt iron. And so we're here at California Nanotechnologies, where we're gonna take the iron that we essentially like half baked, and we're gonna actually melt it down by going way over the temperature that we need to melt iron. How does this machine work? So, uniaxial press applies compressive force to your tooling. Okay. Um, that uh, pulse DC current is traveling directly through, and okay. through that, uh, your your heating is is achieved. So it's like pressing while sending electricity through it. Exactly. How fast does it get up to temperature? So uh, basically, um, I mean, you can go hundreds and hundreds of C a minute, uh, but it's a matter of control. To, just to start, uh, I don't know how this is going to perform, uh, so I'll, I'll be a little bit conservative, but I mean, we could absolutely rocket it if we wanted to. So because there's so much electric current running through this, essentially this whole thing now has its own magnetic field. And so this magnet, and I'm holding it in my hand, I can actually feel the magnet pulsing with the magnetic field. I mean, it feels like it has a heartbeat. Oh. Take a look. It like melted into a little ball. Well, boys, I can center a little too hard, but. <laughs> There's something. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna dig it out. Like, what are your thoughts? What happened? First of all, we went, uh, we went pretty hot. We went significantly hotter than uh, melting temperature. Okay. Uh, just to sort of ensure that um, what was happening inside of that pocket was where we needed to be. What we saw was not only that it was just in that little ball, but that there was actually some amount of like violence to, yeah. Yeah, like vapor kind yeah, of. Exactly. Sort of. With further analysis, this iron looks like it's very much bonded to the graphite, which we kind of learned while we were in there. That's a possibility. At a certain temperature, the graphite can become, I guess, porous, and the iron can kind of like seep in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to chip away at this and try to get the iron out without ruining our crucible. Booyah! That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the iron that we extracted from our cereal. And it's actually metallic. I mean, you can see 
that that is iron. Okay, so after we melted it all down, we ended up with 200 milligrams of metallic iron, which is not exactly enough to make a sword. So I went online and I did some research and I found that the exact type of iron that we extracted out of the fortified cereal is called electrolytic reduced iron. So instead of wasting more cereal, I just went ahead and bought some of that iron right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the iron that we've already extracted out of the cereal with some of this that I just bought basically at a chemical store that was gonna go back into cereal at some point anyways. And we're gonna remelt it down into our crucible and we're gonna make a sword that way. We're gonna tan. The surface uh, tension of molten iron is so high that it's like beating together and so it's pulling itself apart even within the crucible. So we didn't really have enough iron to go like all the way across like the sword we were thinking. And so we're gonna add even more iron to the mix now. Uh, and so they're gonna do another melt and then we're gonna just get a chunk of iron and we're gonna work with that. The next day. Okay, here's what we finally ended up with. So now we're gonna turn this into a sword. Iron metal actually is quite brittle. And so I don't wanna like smash it. I wanna be pretty gentle with it. We must dig deeper. All right guys, so we finally got down to just our iron. It's actually quite a bit. And that was quite a bit of work to get that up. We're probably gonna end up reducing this to about half, I would say, of what it is now. You could probably just slice this in half. Okay, so here's the idea. We're gonna carve this little guy into this shape right here. So we're gonna like get it relatively flat without it being like too flat, so I don't want it to break. So we're gonna have a one centimeter little like handle shaft. That's gonna allow us to put the guard on, whoop, right over top of it. And then we're just gonna take a little piece of wood, put a little hole in it, about the same size for whatever we ended up with, probably right around like two millimeters, very small. And then we're just gonna stick that right in there. We're gonna glue it, wood glue, take off like two millimeters on each side, and then bevel it down so that we actually have like a really nice, sharp, little tiny mini sword. <laughs> we did it. A sword. We've now made the frosted mini shank. It looks really good, I really like it, but I wanted to do the pomegranate test. Let's see if the frosted mini shank lives up to its name, if it can actually shank or not. So here we go. Pomegranate versus frosted mini shank. Oh my god. Oh gosh. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it definitely works. It's a real little sword. Very cute, but kind of dangerous. Big shout out to both California Nano Technologies and Electrotech Machine for making this whole video possible. Like they totally opened their doors and helped us out with this wild, weird concept. I'm putting the link to both those companies in the description below. Just check them out. They're just really cool. They just love science just like us. They're just awesome. The cereal that we did use actually for the experiment, we ended up actually using as fertilizer because it turns out actually that cereal is a really good fertilizer. So we ended up fertilizing the orange tree in my backyard. Um, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you really soon.